Ladies and gentlemen, welcome, welcome. My name is Ninjutsu Evolved and this is MXGP Career Mode, Episode 6. Um, for those of you who were here last time, I'm going to give you a few seconds if you need to go back and catch up on any of the previous episodes. Three, two, one. If you were here with us from the beginning, you will know that at Balkans Ward in the Netherlands, we were dominant. Double race victory, overall GP victory. We're on something of a streak at the minute. Um, we've won two Geo Grand Prix meetings in a row. We won in at Sriracha overall as well in Thailand. And we've won three um, motos in a row, three races in a row, with, with the one victory in the, in, the second, in the second race in Thailand, and then the double up in the Netherlands. The next track I'm hoping is going to be very good for us. Uh, we head back to Agueda where we had our first wildcard meeting, the MX2s, and we took two third places and a fourth overall. But as we said, as I've said before, looking at the pace that I had, if I can eliminate the mistakes, hopefully we should be looking at uh, another double victory. Uh, so, you know, it's, it's all about trying to keep this win streak going and keep the Grand Prix victories going. But, I mean, if you look at the GP standings, from being 24 points behind in the standings at the start of the previous round, we did move to seven clear at the top. As we're seven clear of Lupino, with Hurlins 14 back from us, and then Charlier a further two from him, 16 points off the top. So we're going to jump straight into the race at Agueda. As you can see, it's all the same settings as usual. Let's get into it quite looking forward to this I've got the feeling that we should be fairly we should be caught we should be very competitive across the course of this meeting hopefully I don't know why I stay quiet for that because it's not like we haven't seen that from before. <laughs> so anyway, here we go, ladies and gentlemen, same deal as usual, no qualifying, straight into the double race. Uh, we're going to try speed these videos up a little bit because I've noticed on a few of them, I've just been waffling on at the start. So we're going to jump straight into this. So, same deal as we normally do, we're hoping for a much better start than we had at the first race when we were here as a wild card we got taken out in turn one but we got the line sorted out for the second race let's see if we can make it count this time from the outside love to get a whole shot but at the very least i'd like to get away with the leading three or four depending on how many people break away in that opening pack there we go a good start away decently, doesn't look too bad off the line, in a couple of positions, we run it all the way around the outside, probably a little bit too wide but oh, I'll get a great run coming back up the hill, because of that extra extra distance that we carried around the outside, it leaves us in second, it's beautiful, we just need to stay on the bike and push the pace that we had before, we should be looking at a comfortable vic we could be looking at a comfortable victory. Oh, the extra speed we carry by avoiding that jump. Don't want to case that landing quite so much. Just need to stay with Anstey though. We both look like we've got a fair bit more pace than the people following us. Of course, Anstey, who's fifth in the championship, he's not even in that top four. Oh, lost a lot of speed through there. Did not get a good exit. We don't need to push too hard, just need to stay with him at this point. Oh, bogging down terribly. Oh, nearly got his front wheel taken out then. Very aggressive. That could have gone a lot worse. This is normally, it's this set of corners here where we're normally quite quick. We carry that sweeping line through the first part and cut back in for the second. Just got the measure of us. At the moment, it looks like Anstey really has got the measure of us. Just need to stay with him. 
let him break away. Ooh, and that could have been a lot worse. I'm going to lose a fair bit of time because of that little wobble, but at least we didn't come off the bike. That's the important thing. Now we just need to refocus. Edge back down. Trying out it. Carry a lot more speed. Get a brake check if you go over the hill instead of going around it. That felt a lot quicker. Supposedly we were two seconds off going across the intermediate split. Nowhere near that now. All around the outside. Oh. Now you get to drive up the hill, get back on the track so you don't get the so you don't get reset. That's what I'm talking about. 1.2 clear. Oh, that felt nice. I honestly thought, I mean, after earlier when we nearly got his front wheel taken away, I thought that could that could have gone a lot worse. Well, accelerate out. Didn't try to use the power to turn the bike in, but there's times where it's just taking too much. Opening this gap up though. I hate that corner. Especially after before when I clipped that inside hail bale going through the first section. 51 1. We know we're faster than that. The gap stays static to Ansi at 1.2. Keep the momentum, keep the pace, keep pushing. A lot closer than it was, as you can see, at Valkan's Ward. Valkan's Ward, we must just be a lot quicker than we are here. We've got pace around this track, but it's not earth-shattering. Cat Ford's been making mistakes at any point, really. You need to keep the, keep the nose, keep the bike clean, keep the bike upright. Keep pushing away. It was 1.2. Oh, 3.7, I'll take that. Two and a half seconds in the first sector. See, now we've got clear air. We're able to really push on. Much better through that room section, especially the last part of it. Sorry, I know I'm not saying much, but... I'm doing everything I can not to drop this bike at the moment. It's 3.7, 4.4, so another 7 tenths, another 7, oh, and then we drop the bike because I'm concentrating on the lap time and on the gap. Instead of just hitting my marks, that was a much better jump up that hill rolling on the previous lap. Oh, got it all wrong there. Oh, oh! Got absolutely stuck there for some reason. My my pad just died. Oh, I was trying to get the bike settled and got stuck. Oh, third place. What the hell? That absolutely fell apart there. I mean, fair enough, we've still beaten most of the people who were close to us in the championship. Charlie in 6th, Perlin's in 8th, Rapino in 11th. Anstey wins, but he was 5th in the championship. You know, it's not as bad as I'm thinking it is. But I know that should have been a 25. I know that should have been a maximum point and a 4th for more or win in a row. Oh. Yeah, I'm quite disappointed with that. That was that was pathetic. That was absolutely pathetic. It's the problem with this game sometimes through the tight corners like that. It'll suddenly sharpen up, and the, like the turning angle will suddenly dramatically increase. And that's what happened there. I've been trying like to lip, like to try and time when I don't need to turn anymore to try and make sure that I fire the bike straight over the jump instead of having it turning into the sideboards. 
But if you saw the first time when I was here as a wild card, I hit one of the bales on the right hand side at that same part because I came off the turning too soon. Right, doesn't matter. Refocus. This should be where we win. I don't want two third places again like last time. I know I've got a lot more pace than that on this right. I know if I just push, I can win this. Back up into second again. It's, whoa, it's a different person running away at the front. It's like Yordi, Yordi to share. I have no idea if I'm pronouncing that right. We just sail up the inside of him. Didn't put any up near, anywhere near the sort of fight that Anstey did. Only seven tenths clear, but seven tenths is seven tenths. It's enough. Now we've just got to get his heads down and push. I know at this point, realistically, I probably shouldn't be taking chances. But after the disappointment of that last race, where we absolutely made a pig's ear of it in the final sector, with a decent lead, Point eight clear of Bocock in second. So this is the sort of pace that we know we have. Just got to got a nice jump up there as well. Feel the little step up. Just got to keep the pace up. Whoop! And there it goes again. Turning angle suddenly just sharpens right up. I hate that. It's probably the camera that I'm running, but oh, it's running a bit wide through the first part. Get the power on for the second part though. Yeah, I felt much, that felt alright. 1.3 clear, so we've lost about a second and a half, but a second to a second and a half, I can't remember exactly what it was, 2.3 or 2.8. Still got a decent lead, it's still enough. Ooh, bike's getting very, very squirmy though, especially when I'm coming off the throttle and then reapplying. Get a nice jump like that. 39.9. That was back up to 2.7. I probably should have come off the bike then, hitting that advertising board on the left hand side. We've had a lot of luck in this season. It can't be disputed. We've had bad luck and we've had good luck. We've had an awful lot of both, though. Especially when you look back at Vulcan's Ward and you look at the, uh, the pass we put on for the lead in the second race there. You know, physics dictates that we should, that shouldn't have been possible and we should have come off the thing. But I'm not going to argue with it. Ooh, nose came up a lot then. I didn't want it to come up quite so much. Three clear now with four clock. That's another three tenths. Ooh, through that middle sector. Oh, cut that too deep inside. Again, I hate that corner. See, I, there were a point that I got used to taking that corner, being able just to take it flat. Now I'm, I'm quite nervous of it. I'm quite anxious of it. 52-1. Last sector didn't feel too quick. Oh, even though we ma we only got matched by Pocock behind us, but we did gain a couple of seconds on that lap. 1.8 to be precise. So it's pretty sure it was 1.2 over the line. this. Whoa, beautiful, beautiful. Get the power on to get the nose in. Sweep through that corner again. Clear jump all the way up to the top. I'm starting to really enjoy that first sector. Starting to really get into that first sector of that. 3.6, so Pocock definitely picked his pace up. We made nearly one point, we made, made over a second on through that sector before. This time it's only six tenths. Pushing though, still pushing. You don't want to back off, not for a second, don't want to allow anyone to get anywhere near. Ooh, 
put that a bit too much. We shouldn't reset as then now. I'm 16 for the second section. I think that's the second quicker than we were before. Gaps up to 5.2. Okay, case that a little bit but it still felt okay. Final corner. Whoa, see what I mean? I let go of it and I nearly clicked that bail like I did as a wild card. But it's not gonna make a difference at this point. That's pretty much absolutely what we needed. Big recovery. 50.2, we've gone only two seconds quicker on this final lap. 6.7 second lead at the end of the race, I'll take that one. So Charlier finishing in fourth, Hurling's in eighth, Pino in ninth. Anstey after winning the first moto finishing down in last, so that should give us the overall. And it does. So even though we're not on a streak of race wins, that's his third Grand Prix win in a row. Very happy with that. And as you can see the gap at the top of the standings. We're now what? 28 points clear of Charlier. So that's over a Moto's victory. Over Charlier in second. Lupino in third on 133. Hurling's fourth 130. Anstey fifth 126. So again that top five, especially second to fifth, are all very close, all within 10 points. Nine points from second to fifth. But then there's that nice gap up at the top. Yeah, I'll take that all day long. So we let us XP add on, see how many fans we've acquired. There should be a few fans because we did really well. And then we celebrate. Absolutely beautiful. I'll take that all day long. I love that. It, yeah, it's exactly what I want. Dominance at the front. Oh, okay. I forgot about this. So, five races in. No, four. Four Grand Prix in. It's part six in it, obviously. Yeah, so, four Grand Prix into the season. And it looks like we're going to get a few new offers. Ooh, and some good bikes. I'm going to have to go for one of the top ones. You know what, I'm looking at... Where is a Yamaha? I would quite like a Yamaha if it's powerful enough. Yeah, stuff it. Yamaha it is. I'm a Valentino Rossi fan. I've got a Valentino Rossi uh, jacket hung on my door from his 2006? No, 2005 championship winning season. Yeah, with Nicky Hayden in 06. Uh, Golois's Yamaha. So yeah, I'll take a Yamaha as well. Let me see. Cairoli dropping three points. We only dropped, fair enough, we only dropped five. But as you can see, 28 points clear, he is in MX1. Same advantage that we've got in MX2. So, yeah, nice parallels there to draw. So ladies and gentlemen, the next race will be, we're going back outside of Europe, we go to uh, Beto Carrero, don't know if I'm pronouncing that right, in Brazil. Um, because we've changed teams, this team objective has reset, if you're wondering why it's gone down from 30 points that we're expecting before, back down to 20, that's because we've changed team. Despite the fact we're on a faster bike, they don't want us to score as many points, which is fine. And the rider challenge is Christophe Charlier, because is Charlier second in the championship? Yeah, he is. Yeah. So from this point on, pretty much from Vulcan's Ward onward, second, like, it was the guy who was closest to us in the championship. So it's going to be us against Charlier, and Hurlings, and Lupino. And Anstey, I should probably just shut up at this point. I'm just going to wrap it up. 
So ladies and gentlemen, that's been episode 6 of MXGP Career Mode. I've been in Jitsu Evolved. Um, join us again for episode 7 from Brazil, where we're going to be hoping to uh, increase our 28-point championship lead. So thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you all again next time.